Well, I just learned something from uh, the history of America that I never learned in school and haven't heard of since I've grown up. You know, um, it's not right how some police have treated the black or African American race. Not sure which is the politically correct way to say it anymore. Things change. And I feel very sorry for the innocent ones who have been shot. Of course. Who wouldn't if you have any kind of heart at all? Doesn't matter what color or race you are, if you've got any kind of heart at all, you don't want anybody mistreated, especially if you're a Christian. Well, I had been wondering what had happened to Dana Ashley, and I found on the side over here of a video someone sent me, a video of hers, and it is called The Privilege They Erased from History by Dana Ashley on her YouTube channel. Who knows how long this will stay up. If it comes down, hopefully you'll find it on Brideon. Anyway, um, I'm going to play just a little bit of it. I'm, I'm pretty far into it. It's 37 minutes, 27 seconds. And I kept thinking... I, I'm not going to play the whole thing, you know. You need to go to her channel, give her the numbers. Um, she did a lot of work, bought a lot of books, and found video clips even. So let me play just a little bit. And this is 20 minutes, 15 seconds into the video well over a hundred years. Yep, whites were slaves too, even before the first African was brought into America. And when one can scarcely think of whites as slaves, the mind first thinks, well, truly they were treated better, right, than what we hear the black slaves were treated later on. But in the documents, when you dig deep, paint a very different story. Like those found in the records of Middlesex country, Virginia, whippings were commonplace, as were iron collars and chains. The horrifying treatment was not an uncommon reality of whites in bondage in the colonies, but it was so common, in fact, that the whipping of white slaves resulted in so many being beaten to death that in 1662, the Virginia Assembly passed a law prohibiting the private burial of white slaves because such burials helped to conceal murders by their masters. The colonial records are simply chocked full of the death of white servants by beatings and starvation and exposure, yet you'll find no conviction of the murder of their masters, only innocence perhaps due in part to the fact that it was only the propertied white class and therefore for whom white slavery was very profitable, that were allowed to serve on a jury. White slaves and white servants were forbidden this privilege. Look, this certainly is not a look who suffered contest. I am forced to point out a very deep, dark fact about our nation's history because of this contrived narrative that is today using the lies by the offspring of the same elites that today are causing so many of us to openly hate and persecute each other right now. This omission of our true past is a crime in and of itself. The horrendous story of black slaves, and it was a horrendous story, has been told over and over and over. But the horrendous story of white servitude and slavery has been completely and purposefully hidden. There are even channels and propaganda right now trying to say that if you speak about white slavery, you yourself are a white supremacist. What? Shouldn't it be obvious that admitting to the most humiliating human experience and existence, that of slavery, is about as opposite of supremacist as you can get? Why shouldn't we learn from our horrible mistakes, all of them, of the wrong ways we treated all people? Meanwhile, the tons of Irish slaves brought into America suffered 
horrible prejudices for many centuries following. Prejudices for simply being Irish, effectively preventing... She's showing old newspaper clippings here. Wanted a girl of neat and industrious something. It's cut off. Let's see if I back it up a tiny bit. Well, the first one is going, wanted a German protest something. Protestant, probably. Or colored girl for general housework in a... Can't read that. Good reference required. No Irish need apply. In Portland... Portland Avenue near Myrtle, okay? Then it goes on. Being Irish, effectively wanted a girl of neat and industrious habits and an amiable disposition to take the entire charge of two small children. No Irish need apply. Add dress with Real name and residence, HMD box number, whatever, something times office. So, there you go. And this was, I don't know, there's no date on it. Preventing them from getting jobs or housing. Signs like this all over America at that time were not uncommon. Here's Perhaps another one. Okay, the date is 1914 or 16. Help wanted. No Irish need apply. In the 19... I think that's a 16. October 12, 1916. Because the story of white slavery was hidden in the retelling of American history and never told through American media. Perhaps that alone helped the Irish to more easily move on with their lives and so flourish. Again, the psychological damage inflicted upon blacks through perpetuating them as the only slave race? This relentless narrative that has been hung over their heads for decades as the victim culture is extremely damaging to them. Shouldn't it be a relief that they're not the only ones? That they, that they could perhaps make them feel not so alone in this measure? But again, that is not what our keepers want. Mm -hmm. They want to keep only a certain people in the clutches of the psychological slavery that exists in the mind and spirit that is victimhood. And that woman you saw earlier, I think she was Jamaican-American. She didn't have it. I am black, I'm not oppressed. I am free. I'm just for you as an individual person. What about a systemic issue? Where? I do what I want. You have the skills. This is a culture where you have the skills. You want to do what you want. You do it. Okay. Stop stop forcing on people to accept that they're oppressed. They are not. I am not oppressed. I am black. The victimhood narrative is damaging and it is a lie. It is like having a wound, a deep cut of a wound. And just as it starts to scab over and heal, you rip it off and have to start over with the pain all over again, inflicting the trauma over and over with each new story of victimhood. Thus, well, I'm going to stop it there. But earlier in this video, she was talking about how it was the Christian white women and children, some men who were kidnapped, and that's where this expression kidnapped came from. That used to be kid nabbed, they were nabbed especially if they had become orphaned and were sleeping in the streets. They were just taken by the constables in England. I mean, she just gives example after example and what book she got it out of, and there, it's just been buried. It's been taken out of our history books, but Wikipedia, she shows, has a long thing about white slavery. You type it in, white slavery. Maybe where she got her start. A lot of times if you just Google something, you'll at least get your start. And then it'll lead to something else and then that book will have references in it. You can go buy those books and that's how you research. So, 
you know, before I started this, I wanted to see what's going on out in Seattle with CHOP or Chaz, whatever. And they are dismantling it. Somebody decided enough was enough. And I watched a very short video, and then I clicked on the next part two, it said, and it was two hours and some. So I only watched a little piece of it. The Department of Transportation has arrived out there in Seattle to remove what they're calling barricades. Some they built, some the city gave them concrete block things that they use to block off uh, a road when they're going to do road construction and they want to make sure you can't drive through it, you know. So, um,. We all know why that's going on, although I've, I've asked how many people. Have you heard of CHOP? Do you know what Chaz is? They're not hearing it on the mainstream media. Why are they not reporting that on the mainstream media? They don't want people in an uproar to get it kicking down? I don't know, but... They finally decided, somebody decided, whether it was that mayor or the governor or the president, I don't know that yet. I decided just to go ahead and make this video, but at least that's coming down, and I pray this video goes viral. It's so far gotten uh, 36,865 views, and it was put up on the 28th. Today is Monday, June the 29th. It's 3.14 p.m. So, people need to know this. They need to know it. Not just black people, but white people. They need to know that we, too, had our beginnings, a lot of us, our ancestors, had beginnings in slavery. Especially if they were Christians. So... Things have been going on a lot longer and differently than we know, than we've been taught. Our history books have been written to cause the white people to feel superior to black people, when in fact, we had the same beginnings, a lot of us, a lot of our ancestry. And if they had told the truth, there wouldn't be this racial divide that they want. See, the elite that she spoke of, the same elite that, that kidnapped and sold white people into slavery from way before America was formed. It was the Eastern Europeans that frequently got kidnapped by Mus the Muslims and sold into slavery. Rich Muslims. So now should we go after them? No, I don't think so. Like people just need to, that's why Jesus taught us. Love your neighbor as yourself. You forgive those who've hurt you. Why does anybody have to think of history? What happened to their great, 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 great grandpa? Or great, great, great grandma? Drop it. Let's all drop it. Let's all forget about it already. The elite and the Illuminati have brought it all on all of us. And we don't have to... I mean, we already know where they're coming from. They want a civil war. They want. They need chaos so they can create order out of chaos. Look at the back of your dollar bill where it says Novus Ordum Seclorum. Uh, gee, if I had a dollar bill, I'd get one out and show you, but I don't keep cash as a rule. Um point is it's all in the past people got to let things go and what happens between the police and uh, 
a big punched an old white man in their rage against what was happening because of George Floyd, who supposedly, according to his lawyer, died three years ago. People can't understand that a lot of the stuff that happens is done by crisis actors. They find people that look like other people. They find victims. They find someone to play the family. Whatever. They hire them. They give or they... Anyway, they find out if they can act or not. And then if they do, they, they hire them. People, that's going on. It really does happen. Of course, they probably don't like me saying that, but I don't want to besmirch anybody's death if it was for real, but why would his lawyer from Texas say, George Floyd died three years ago? And then that one person comes on and says, this is true, this is not true, this is not true. And one of them was George Floyd died three years ago. It was like a two-minute video. No proof. No, uh, the lawyer wasn't really his lawyer. There was no, absolutely no source. So, far as I'm concerned, he was a liar. But I don't know that. I'm just here to try to present the truth. And when I learn of some, I'm going to tell you. We got to stop all this. We got to all learn to get along, forgive one another for past mistakes, and that goes for family members and a friend to a friend, a neighbor to a neighbor. I don't care what they did. I don't care if they killed your cat. You forgive them. You find a way to forgive them. You may not can stand hanging out with them, but you better forgive them, honestly, and in your heart. With that I say, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. Again, it's Dana Ashley, A-S-H-L-I-E. If you can't read, find the link in the description box. And it's called The Privilege They Erased From History. So I plead the blood of Jesus over myself, my computer, and my internet connection. I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you and your devices. And all of your internet connections. I pray that everybody who hears this video can take it to heart and just learn to forgive already. And understand who we are in Christ. If you call yourself a Christian, you better be able to say, I forgive. It's terrible what happened, but I forgive. I hate it that my ancestors, I have some Irish ancestry. Not, not much as the English, Scottish, Sweden. And a little Indian. I have my mother has an Indian grandmother. So I even got some Indian in me. Well, most of us are a mix. I hate it. What's happened to anybody? Iron collars. Being beaten for what? Not picking enough potatoes that day. Being so tired you just got to lay down. Who knows? It's horrible to think about it. It is really horrible. With that, I'll say bye for now. And I'll talk to you later.